Traditions and cultural understandings often shape our view of the world and other people in ways that limit our interactions. How do we overcome our limited understandings? Through a vision in the spirit, Peter learned how and why to witness to Cornelius and his household. Today's key verse reads, And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Acts chapter 10 verse 28. Jewish law was very specific about what Jews were to eat and how they were to conduct themselves. In their original form, these rules were meant to protect the people of Israel and set them apart as God's people. These laws and covenant agreements made it possible for sinful humanity to commune with God. However, through Christ's sacrifice, God had removed the barrier of sin between himself and his people. Humanity could now commune with God through the acceptance of his Son, Jesus Christ. This transition from law to grace through Christ created friction between Jewish Christians who still held to their Jewish culture and the new Gentile believers who hadn't converted to Judaism. Peter's vision was followed by a clear divine command. He was not only addressed by the Spirit, but was also told that God was at work in this affair. The reader understands with Peter that it was not only the human Cornelius who sent the messengers, they were also sent by God. Peter, in effect, is told not to be filled with doubts about the events that will eventually lead him to understand how he is not to discriminate between people, the Holy Spirit directs Peter to go with the men and not doubt. Cornelius is struck with awe at Peter's visit. From this we can infer that Cornelius believed Peter to be a servant of Jesus, thinking that Peter could impart salvation. As a Gentile steeped in paganism, this centurion offers him the required obeisance as a semi-divine son of God who had supernatural powers. Cornelius's reaction is ingrained and reflexive. But God is the only one who should receive worship, which Peter makes very clear. Peter talks to Cornelius as they enter the home. When he sees all the people gathered together, he sees an opportunity to express what God has revealed to him. Peter states that it is contrary to Jewish law for him to keep company with a Gentile or enter a Gentile's home. Such practices were not prohibited, though, by Jewish law. Instead, Peter is echoing a common Gentile perception at the time, which developed out of table fellowship issues. Because it was culturally taboo to inquire about these matters, some Jews avoided eating and drinking with Gentiles altogether. Cornelius and his Gentile associates would have been surprised that Peter was willing to enter his home. Peter explains that not only could they fellowship together, but God even told Peter that he should no longer think of anyone or anything as unclean or unacceptable to God without ritual purification. The Bible says Cornelius was a devout man, meaning he tried to be godly in his ways and gave God due reverence. His godliness was evident by his positive influence over all those in his house, and he gave money to the poor while praying to God always. The angel in the vision let Cornelius know that God had heard his prayer and his alms were remembered, or God was mindful of them. Peter's message is that everyone who believes is forgiven. It is very clear that the gospel was sent to Israel and also to the Gentiles. Peter now sees how God called him to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. They are now included in God's family. Here's our lesson. God's mighty providence works everything out. God can weave a tapestry of people and events in our lives that appear unrelated or totally unknown to us. And when the time is right, God will pull all of the pieces together so we can answer the call he has been preparing for us for some time. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.